today we shall look at the effect of uh, the uh, flow of uh, corrosive environment on the corrosion of metals. So far what we discussed was related to the environment being very static and uh, in several cases uh, at least in industry the environment uh, need not be static. The environment uh, you know there is a flow there are so many complex flow conditions that exist in the in the industrial uh, scenario. The corrosion of metals are uh, different if the uh, if the environment uh, you know uh, flows uh, in relation to the metallic structures. So, this topic uh, so assumes uh, very uh, greater importance. So, we will discuss uh, in detail uh, what are the kinds of flow that affect the, the metallic structures from the corrosion point of view, uh, what are the mechanisms involved, the factors uh, that control the flow assisted or uh, you know velocity affected corrosion. And then also we look at the control measures. So, uh, here we would say that flow assisted, I am going to separate out like this and uh, or erosion, cavitation. corrosion. Now, uh, as I told you there can be a relative movement of environment. Please notice that uh, when you say the environment, we talk about not a benign one, it is a corrosive environment. Now, uh, let us try to understand what you mean by relative movement first of all. The structures can be static. can be what happens the environment moves I will say. See an example is a pipeline carrying water, carrying various types of uh, chemicals. Another example could be heat exchangers, right. The structure is static, the environment moves maybe a different velocity, different pressure, temperature all this happen. The structure so move can you give an example anybody? You can say shape, but the velocity is not ok you can say shape talk about an aircraft also, spacecraft sure. In fact, uh, aircraft uh, moves at a very high 
speed. Other examples industrially agitators right in a in a in a turbine right a turbine the blades it could be a gas turbine or it could be a hydraulic turbine a gas engine anything else impellers they move propellers you know they move. So, these are about the two types of structures I would like to say ok. Now, let us look at the, the environment what is mean by the environment here. course, we are talk about the fluids. At least one has to be a fluid. I mean, corrosive environment is is a fluid. It could be a single phase. Or it could be multi phase. Generally, two phases are can happen common. It is a simply a water, a sea water. An example this is sea water plus some sand, right? Can happen in a in a in a thermal power plant, for example, you talk about a steam generators, you may have a gas, steam, you may have water. In a gas turbine, there can be corrosive gases, there can be particles. So, when you say fluid, it is not necessarily a liquid, ok. It can be a corrosive gases, it can be liquid, but the solid is not necessarily a, a corrosive. In most cases, you do not even consider them as corrosive. Their role is to give an impact. We will see this later how they can really affect the corrosion of structures. If you look at you know in the fluid the fluid conditions when the when the fluid moves, how the corrosion rate of the structure or the metallic structure uh, can change with respect to the velocity. We have seen in um, you know somewhere right I think uh, the role of velocity on corrosion corrosion rate right we have seen before can anybody recollect yeah yeah we talk about a concentration polarization right when there is a concentration polarization when you increase the velocity the corrosion rate increases it is simply a diffusion control process actually there. If there is no diffusion control process the velocity does not play any significant role. You can go back and see your uh, you know the first part of the course on thermodynamics and kinetics of electrochemical corrosion. If you plot this something like that. The corrosion rate initially increases uh, you know gradually like that. A steep increase in corrosion then again it slopes off like this. There is uh, there is you see here there is a velocity called a critical velocity. above which the rate of corrosion steeply increases with velocity right. 
when you when you when you when you visualize let us say uh, so a pipeline suppose you visualize it and if the fluid moves travels in the pipeline if the movement of the fluid is parallel to the surface what do you call that you call a laminar flow right if the flow rate is increased what happens now it is no more uh, parallel to surface it is going to hit the uh, surface ok. What do you call this? Now, the laminar flow, turbulent flow, they all depends, this is described by Reynolds number and there are equations, we will not get into um, that kind of discussion here, ok. But it is, it is enough to understand that the velocity or I put other way around the nature of flow decides the kind of corrosion you can happen. The laminar flow or a turbulent flow that depends on velocity, density, you know, the dimensions of the pipeline so many factors. So, the rate of corrosion over here the nature of corrosion over here is different from that of over here can happen. So, you can say that in this case you can divide this something like this is going to be a turbulent and it is going to be laminar and major part of the laminar flow I mean we can say that can be you know the corrosion rate can be controlled by the diffusion processes if it is essentially a corrosion is a diffusion control right. Some of you would have uh, the study if, I, if you can recollect that right. If you recollect if it is a cathodic reaction it is a diffusion control right. This is called I L and the velocity increases we talked about this right in the first part of the, um, the class. So, it is a diffusion control process and the corrosion can assist and the mass transport is important you see later how the corrosion can get affected right. Now, the depending upon the kind of flow conditions exist in a pipeline, the types of corrosion can be broadly classified into three types ok. Nature I call as types of corrosion which are induced by the flow. One is called as flow induced corrosion. This is essentially related to increase in mass transfer. mass transfer of what the mass transfer of the corrosion product how quickly it can get removed from the surface. Earlier we talked about the diffusion control process of what in that case what is what is diffusion control there. If you remember what 
when we said here what was the mass transfer control here? It is the cathodic species that is mass transfer control. We will see here in this case it is not necessarily the cathodic species reduction species mass, mass transfer control. It is oxidized species which are mass transfer control I will just talk about uh, soon. Next is uh, Erosion, corrosion, here it is mechanical damage, mostly of uh, surface films. So, there is an impact that is uh, there is a real erosion taking place right in the, in the sense of uh, mechanical factor. The other one is is a cavitation corrosion it is majorly mechanical. Corrosion, if you can say, is minor. Okay, I put within quotes. Okay, is minor. Now we have classified the, the corrosion occurring on a metal into three different categories. Primarily because the mechanism of corrosion in all these cases are different. When the mechanisms are different, the solutions are going to be different. Okay, so we're not going to apply the same solution in all the case. Of course, I mean there can be an overlap of properties and the protective measures, but distinctly they are different. You can see that. So now let's look at the the first type of thing. I mean uh, that is the flow assisted corrosion flow induced or flow assisted you know you, you can you can call uh, either way actually. What is this flow induced corrosion or flow assisted corrosion? What is this? What does it do? What it does is that the flow that happens in the system mostly in the pipelines the assist the solubility of corrosion products then reduce Film formation and so it can enhance corrosion. It can happen in single or two phase conditions, two phase. Um, yeah, two phase uh, flow, I would say. Let me try to explain what we mean by this, all these factors here. The flow assisted corrosion uh, was, you know, was first a problem where assist were found in. Thermal power plants, huh? Yeah. 
they are found uh, in thermal power plants and they made a uh, uh, a survey in, in 1990 1997 of uh, 63 power plants 63 plants utilities in in all these cases they found you know quite an extensive uh, you know plants uh, suffered the flow assisted or flow induced corrosion now uh, you know in in power plants what do you use i mean to to i mean you generate steam right and and steam is uh, used to run the turbine and so that means you are going to use water it is essentially a pure water okay so we are not discussing that probably in the next course uh, on industrial corrosion control we'll talk about corrosion of boilers and all the stuffs the generation of steam means you use pure water there are certain specifications depending upon the pressure of the boilers they maintain the pH they maintain the the purity levels conductivity and so on and so forth they normally use steels ok. How does the corrosion resistance of the steel occur there primarily because by controlling the pH you can do that when you do that they form a film on the surface. See otherwise you can imagine that steel is you know in a, in a typical boiler the temperature can be about 250 to 280 degrees Celsius ok and in economics is maybe 130, 140. The temperature of the steel tubes are in this range and you use water and you know it will undergo corrosion right. So, you, you know very well and you have a lot of steel structures here when rain comes you see a flash rust just couple of hours you see it all turn turning the red is brown. How is it possible for the steel to resist corrosion here by controlling the environment that means you change into into a an alkaline pH and the film formation becomes a dominant mechanism of corrosion prevention of steel. So, that means these oxides are generally a magnetic oxide right this is a, what is the magnetic oxide F E 3 O 4 is a magnetic oxide formed and this oxide prevents the corrosion of steel structures. Now, please look at you have this formation when does it form? This will form only when the solubility of F E 2 plus and F E 3 plus right. This constitute F E 2 plus and F E 3 plus am I right? If the solubility of this one ok uh, is less than the concentration of ions right. So, here what happens you have F E 2 plus and Fe 3 plus ions are coming by dissolving. If the concentration exceeds certain limit they form the precipitate they form a protective oxide please understand this ok. So, that is how generally these metals are prevented. Now, if I have a flow what happens? They swept away these ions from the surface these ions are not going to get enriched and so the film formation becomes very low right. So, high velocity high flow rate means they are I mean the low concentration of F E 2 plus and F E 3 plus taking place. That means, the metal start dissolving more and more ok as you increase the velocities. So, here that is what it means here the, 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 the velocity increases the dissolution process by sweeping away the corrosion products that means, the film formation becomes very low in, in that cases. So, that is the primary mechanism of corrosion of uh, steel by 
flow induced corrosion process. How do they appear? How do they appear? This is the um, uh, uh, the photographs uh, taken uh, on the steel pipeline. I mean, you know, of a superheated uh, heater water. You see, the left side has got a single phase flow here, the two phase flow. You can see that the surface is quite rough, ok. Because of the dissolution process, the surface becomes rough. See, they are all they are dissolved in, in water. Here it is they call it they call it tiger stripes, huh? it looks like a appearance like a tiger stripe. So, they 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 they, they uh, named as uh, tiger stripes. Please understand that this uh, these are not a very uh, high magnification, they are lower magnification, they are not microstructures, ok. So, this is the kind of appearance uh, of the surface, uh, they are affected by flow assisted or flow induced to the corrosion process. Now, these are very important it occurs in the power plants uh, in several places boiler feed water pump. Place of occurrence, feed water pump, tube sheets, tubes in HP heaters, heated drain lines, Economizer inlet tubings, piping to um, economizer heads. Deaerated cell. Now, there are several places I think I just give some illustration that they are important for thermal power plant. Of course, it can happen for nuclear power plant as well, right. So, you have seen now um, the mechanism of flow assisted corrosion, uh, we have seen the importance of the flow assisted corrosion, ok. Now, let us look at what are the factors that affect the flow assisted corrosion. Ok. Obviously, uh, you always have a material component. have the environment, conditions, then you have what is called as hydrodynamic conditions. So, people have uh, modeled this actually. In fact, uh, this is one of the serious problems in nuclear power plants, ok. They have modeled this uh, flow assisted corrosion. The factors that involve are material, as seen, the, the environment and uh, the hydrodynamic conditions existing in a, in, a, in, a, in a flowing system. Now, in the materials, mostly people talk about the chromium content later the environment we have the pH, temperature, uh, 
okay the oxygen content and the hydrodynamic condition means it is all related to mass transfer coefficient right how the mass is being shifted from the surface to the solution so there are going to be a complex parameters okay um so if you look at this it's very interesting now in a pipeline the hydrodynamic conditions might change depending upon what depending upon the diameter the velocity the shape for example it's a u bend or maybe if it's, it's a elbow okay so these uh, locations are affected by severely by this um flow assisted corrosion but these are straight forward ph temperature and oxygen content and increase in chromium content is supposed to be better from the resistance point of view chromium chromium increases increase in chromium lowers flow assisted corrosion and uh, you say that if it is uh, more than 1 weight percent chromium there will be no flow assisted corrosion solved i don't say no and it says i would say i think significantly lower huh? it doesn't occur in stainless steel and you know stainless steels are not used very extensively you know because it is expensive process you know materials so in economizers many of the units we discussed here they are not made up of uh, stainless steels they are earlier they made up of simply carbon steel now people go for chrome steels okay one chromium or even two uh, you know two quarter chromium kind of uh, but one chromium is is quite common uh materials now people use in order to prevent the flow assisted corrosion of metals how one percent is chromium yeah it's it's a good question you you just uh, give me just some time we'll discuss now you'll we'll see how this one uh, percent chromium is is sufficient enough to form a stable uh, oxide on the surface okay let's look at the environment now okay first the temperature and the velocity these two are uh, very critical to plot temperature versus uh, the corrosion rate you will find like this and very interestingly the temperature in this range these are different velocities v1 v2 v3 and v4 and uh, v1 smaller than v2 smaller than v3 smaller than v4 when the velocity increases the flow assisted corrosion increases but note notice here it increases uh, steeply at this temperature with temperature it rises and then there is a drop in uh in the corrosion rate so it's a very unusual thing that you notice um, for any corrosion process it, it is not same as we discussed earlier you know you remember earlier we discussed that the effect of temperature on the corrosion rate of 
water remember I think some of you I said that when you rise the temperature above 85 or so the corrosion rate of water drops because the oxygen escapes from the surface right from the from the water. In a boiler that does not happen right the oxygen cannot escape from that nor the oxygen is present in this water at all. So, what happens is that essentially if you rise the temperature what happen to solubility? In some cases the solubility increases in some cases the solubility decreases. What do you call the solubility called? Have you heard of this retrograde retrogressive solubility. So, the metal starts precipitating after certain certain temperatures. So, when rise the temperature the ability of the system to um, to precipitate to form protective film increases. So, the rising temperature increases the kinetics of metal dissolution assume that there is no film on the surface. The rise in temperature will only lead to increase in the corrosion rate am I right? Assume that no film is formed and if you rise only the temperature the corrosion rate only will increase with temperature. But so, there are two factors the rise in temperature increases the corrosion rate, but the rise in temperature also increases the scale forming tendency. So, the corrosion rate starts falling like this. So, you have an optimum value here wherein the corrosion rate is highest and then it starts falling ok. So, this is a typical of in a, um, a in you find in thermal power plants um, they are they are operating um, for, for the utilities actually ok. And this temperature is in the range of this temperature is in the range of 129 to 149 degree Celsius for a single phase flow and it is in the range of 149 to 199 degree Celsius for two phase flow. So, what are the factors that that then can control um, flow assisted corrosion, velocity, the temperature, right, the pH. Now, all of them should be seen in the, in, the, in 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 the light of the ability to form an oxide film or to damage the oxide film please look at that ok. So, those factors which assist the formation of the film will lower the flow assisted corrosion and those factors which dissolves the film will increase the flow assisted corrosion. So, you do not need chromium to form a passive film in steel. How does the film is formed? The film is formed by maintaining the pH. So, pH is a, is a primary thing for that. So, the role of chromium is just to assist the film formation. So, it is not going to be a pure chromium rich passive film that you see in stainless steels ok. Here the stain the, the film will be yeah having rich in iron oxide is Fe 3 or O 4, but the chromium assists the formation of a stable Fe 3 O 4. So, the kind of film formed here is not same as the kind of film formed in stainless steels. The chromium is only assisting it. If, if the pH is not properly maintained, I do not think that chromium will be sufficient to form any film at all actually. So, that is from you have seen from only from that point of view and so the 1 percent chromium is good. Of course, you increase the chromium content it is even more better, but of course, the cost increases. In industry every penny is important you do not want to keep increasing the uh, MOC um, uh, better materials because that is going to cost more ok. Now, what else can improve the uh, improve the film formation 
interestingly is the role of dissolved oxygen. Okay. So, whatever you discussed is, is, is supported by this dissolved oxygen content, DO content versus the corrosion rate. Now, So, it is this is called as polished surface, this is pre filmed. Please notice that generally the boilers are passivated, you know, this is called a treatment called passivation treatment, people do they call alkali treatment in order to form the film, ok. If you have a film here, it is even better. So, please notice that the oxygen content helps to decrease corrosion rate because the oxygen will what does oxygen do? It, it stabilizes the it increases the corrosion rate no doubt, but if it increases the corrosion rate beyond certain level, it will enriches the metallic ions on the surface and it forms a film. It is very similar to critical current density right. When you reach the critical current density at that point of time you have more metallic ions then the passive film starts forming. So, you need a critical amount of metal ion concentration on the surface in order to form the protective oxide film. So, the oxygen content it does help to do this. This means it is a very interesting here. The corrosion control in this case is done by injecting some oxygen content. in the boilers ok and um, they it is it's about it is about 50 ppb please look at it is not ppm level this is 50 ppb levels. So, they lower lower the um, uh, the uh, flow assisted corrosion. So, we will not get into discussion of the mechanism of that, there are a lot of papers available those who are interested you can, you can read. Please notice this water treatment is not common for all the boilers. The normal boilers we talk about they do not use this, but now we use boilers such as hope you people might be aware of this supercritical boilers. they give this treatment, huh? they give the it is called as oxygenated treatment. Huh? In order to in order to uh, reduce the flow assisted corrosion. So, I just summarize now what we have seen so far, so that you have some clarity. You have flow assisted corrosion. What are the factors that affect flow assisted corrosion? It is a material, the environment involved, and of course, the flow conditions or hydrodynamic conditions. The mechanism here is 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 what the flow assist what simply the electrochemical dissolution process. Now, 
notice no mechanical damage. It is simply that the flow conditions help to sweep away the corrosion products and so the corrosion is increasing. They do not allow the film formation or or lowers the film formation on the surface. So, how do you control this? Control measures chromium alloyed steel used. Maintaining the optimum pH very important thing the design right. Why you say design? The hydrodynamic conditions existing on the surface depend upon flow conditions right. So, you could it could it, it could change. If you are going to have a sharp bends, you are going to have more flow system corrosion. If you avoid that, it may reduce, if reduce a uh, velocity, then also the erosion I mean sorry not erosion corrosion, flow system corrosion would, would, would decrease. So, the design of the system also is, is, is equally important. And of course, the corrosion allowance, you do not want that as the primary way of preventing it, but that still is we are not going to totally eliminate flow sister corrosion, but incorporate the flow sister corrosion rates in the design, especially you know in a unit some places inlets for example, or maybe the bends elbows you should incorporate the you know the corrosion allowance to lower the uh, flow assisted corrosion. Move on next topic which is uh, erosion corrosion. Let us straight away bring out the difference between erosion corrosion and the flow assisted corrosion. Here, no mechanical damage, right. In the erosion corrosion, mechanical damage is predominant. It happens uh, very widely across several industries. The flow assist corrosion mainly uh, I would say related to um, the, the power plants, whether it is a nuclear or fossil uh, fired boiler I mean power plants ok. Um, so, you see this in, uh, in almost uh, the pipelines the, the the locations I would say the locations are where you see them the erosion corrosion are the pipelines especially on the bends and elbows you see this you can see that them in the heat exchanges. especially the inlet inlets. You see them the reaction vessels you will see the agitators grinders for example, 
see in the in the um, uh, in the, um, the mining industry that grinding is very very common right. And uh, sometime uh, even this uh, the ore is transported as a slurry along the pipelines. Right? So, you see huge amount of erosion corrosion taking place in the in the pipelines. Again you will see that imp you know impellers and uh, uh, gas turbines and uh, hydraulic uh, turbines ok. Nozzles they are all quite common examples of erosion corrosion taking place. It is an example of the erosion corrosion please do not use the term um, flow assisted corrosion here it is now erosion corrosion. What you see is a this is a reactor vessel huh? reactor vessel is is a wall actually is 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 a wall actually it is there is a reactor there is inlet here uh, this is the inlet for uh, this is actually the sulfonic acid reaction vessel here so, this is a the kind of um, autoclave you want to call it reactor you call it. Through this the sulfuric acid is is, uh, is pumped this is the surface of the reactor the sulfuric acid travels like this ok. You can see the mark you can see the marking here severe corrosion here taking place right next to that there is not much of a corrosion for two reasons of course, one is the velocity see here. The second is then the, the sulfuric acid get diluted right I mean the, the sulfuric acid get diluted the corrosion rate of the sulfuric acid also comes down sulfonic acid here. Hmm. So, you can also see some kind of flow patterns are you able to see this here I hope you are able to see this flow pattern here right. So, these uh, um, you know these are all having specific features to show that there is certain amount of uh, you know uh, uniqueness in the way the metal gets damaged they, they call it fingerprints ok. Uh, this reactor did not even last for about uh, 6 months within 6 months uh, uh, you know the reactor starts leaking ok. This is uh, the earlier one was a stainless steel huh? it is a, it is a, it is a stainless steel what you see in here it is not a carbon steel it is a stainless steel. This one is a uh, uh, cupro nickel alloy it is um, copper uh, 10 percent nickel and this is uh, a tube for an heat exchanger. In the tube the sea water uh, was flowing look at this the velocity was hardly about 1 meter per second was the velocity. The external I mean on the cell side uh, the process fluid it essentially is hydrocarbon you do not see any corrosion uh, on the on the cell side. I hope you can see the marks here right you see the marks here ok the marks the marks and I hope you can able to see some mark here also right. This is an inlet the inlet of we need exchanger. So, very interesting and uh, there are several tubes in the heat exchanger within about few months of commissioning some tubes started leaking few months ok. Um, it was in a in a refinery located in Mumbai 
So, they change the tubes you know within another one month the heat exchanger started leaking again and they again change the change the tubes. Almost uh, every month they had to shut down the plant. See when you shut down the plant because this is a critical heat exchanger if this exchanger does not operate then the whole uh, refinery has to shut down you know if you shut down the refinery for a day you know it just runs in the crores of rupees it is not just lacks the crores of rupees. The material is not very expensive compared to the production lasts you know you see this. They were using sea water and sea water you know sea water stainless steel will have some problem because they may pitting corrosion or you may have crevice corrosion and copper nickel oil is supposed to be good because they do not pit and all right. And copper nickel is is certainly better from the point of view of uh, uh, what you call as de-alloying as compared to uh, brass we seen it uh, you seen yesterday right. A little bit of uh, discoloration you can see this uh, little bit of green color that has happened because of the uh, nickel dissolution process. But nevertheless uh, 1 meter per second is hardly a velocity and is failing so frequently. So, that was some of the problem we will probably see uh, you know what could be the problem uh, you know in subsequent discussion when we start analyzing the erosion corrosion then we come back to this problem and see uh, what was the real reason for the erosion corrosion of this particular heat exchanger. Now, what I was trying to say was the, the inlet of the heat exchangers generally undergo uh, uh, the erosion corrosion in fact that is termed as uh, inlet corrosion. So, when there is a turbulent it mechanically damages you see you know it it removes mechanically ok. But then what is the difference between erosion and erosion corrosion? So, I give an example suppose there is a pipeline and you are passing let us say nitrogen gas in the pipeline maybe there are certain solid particles ok and the tube gets damaged. So, it is a purely erosion damage. You put a bit of moisture in the system and you say that gas is no more dry, the solid particles are no more dry you just have some water. Now, it becomes erosion corrosion why because you have a corrosion component coming over here. So, erosion corrosion uh, you know it is it is it is a uh, it is a conjoint action of uh, the mechanical erosion factor and assisted by the corrosion factor. So, when you talk about erosion corrosion then we look at the mechanical property of the material as well as the corrosion property of the materials ok. So, that makes a difference in the flow assisted corrosion we never talked about mechanical property of the materials we are talking about the film formation film stability. That is why I said the mechanism are different and so the way you prevent corrosion also going to be different here. So, what are the factors controlling erosion corrosion or affecting erosion corrosion. Here also we talk about the surface films. They are important. Talk about velocity, impingement. turbulence etcetera. They are related to the physical state of the environment velocity, impingement, turbulence they are not talking about the chemical state of it right we are not talking about the pH of that corrosiveness of that is a physical state of the environment ok.
metallurgy of this the metallurgy of the alloy will also decide the surface films you know it's not necessarily they are independent okay but metallurgy here we generally mean in terms of the other mechanical properties such as hardness toughness all kind of stuffs so let's look at the surface films let's take the the first one please notice the film offers a barrier for corrosion it also takes the impact takes impact of the environment right so what should be the property of the film or properties of the film which can provide a better erosion corrosion resistance what are the properties it should be the film should be one it should be hard isn't it then what happens it should be adherent to three what happens it should be resilient right and if you want to more explicitly or be less brittle right what more should be dense and less porous so those alloying elements that added to the alloy that can promote all these properties will ensure that the alloy has a better resistance against erosion corrosion problems okay so these are the important thing that is the guiding factor for alloy development also so please notice it is not necessarily a very thick film now sometimes thick film can be a problem isn't it a thick film see generally the oxide films are brittle compared to the metal when the film becomes thicker and thicker what happens to the re resilience it becomes very bad when the film is thin it is more resilient against any kind of elastic deformation right and in erosion corrosion you are not going to get it to too high impact in cavitation it does happen so you are talking about a resilient within the elastic limit most of the deformation would occur in erosion corrosion okay let us look at some examples of the surface film formation happen the surface film formation would also depend upon the nature of environment it's not just only metal also okay suppose i take a stainless steel i have a reducing environment what happens to the film forming tendency of a stainless steel decreases right because you need oxidizing conditions that could be seen very well uh in the case of let's say um uh type 316 stainless steels uh corrosion 
in ferrous sulfate plus sulfuric acid slurry. Please notice ferrous sulfate is reducing condition, no? it is not oxidizing condition. Ferric sulfate is, is oxidizing condition. If you use 316 stainless steels and if you can look at the corrosion rate, and again with respect to temperatures, the corrosion rate of that somewhere about 5000 MPY, something like that. In the static conditions, ferrous sulfate plus sulfuric acid slurry in the static condition, this is not flow condition. But if you increase the uh, velocity, Or something like that. So, I think it is about some around about 3 meters per second rate is going. So, it is going very very high corrosion rate, it steeply also changes with respect to temperatures. But you add 316 stainless steel and add some copper to that, the corrosion rate you know. copper added. So, when you add a copper to uh, stainless steel, the film forming tendency becomes very high. In fact, if you if you if you look at the material selection for sulfuric acid applications, the stainless steels have copper in it. So, copper helps to form stable passive film. So, this is a significant drop, a significant drop in the in the corrosion rate and these copper additions are all what? They are all in terms of what 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 weight percent, not a very large amount of uh, copper content, it can happen. Similarly, and uh, what people have seen, sea water A copper, a brass. The copper forms cuprous chloride and it forms cuprous oxide in deaerated sea water. Ok, and cuprous oxide is more stable. So, what happens? So, copper zinc is better. So, what we are trying to say is that the nature of the film that forms on the material decides the erosion largely the erosion corrosion resistance of the material. The other example is uh, steel in pure water. It is a ok, where they studied the pH at uh, 50 degree Celsius and the velocity is about um, 39 feet per second is the velocity here. corrosion rate and this is around about 6, about 10 pH. 
Now, the reduction in the corrosion rate both the places are largely related to ferrous hydroxide and ferric hydroxide formation. Here form granular you know Fe 3O4 oxide formation. Okay. Again, there are a lot of internal stresses. So, the point that we need to emphasize here is that the nature of oxide forming on the metal surface bears a significant um, influence on the erosion corrosion of metals. So, let us stop our discussion for the time being.